prestige are kings of high-end pawnbroking. We see all sorts of things coming through the door, whether it's designer handbags, fine watches, jewellery, supercars. And affluent Surrey is full of clients. You can give it to me as a bad depressing day. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to pawn luxury belongings. Ideally, we would like to get 25 grand. Blimey. For urgently needed cash. I think the banknotes are worth about 20,000. This time, Whoa. there's big money deals. The value is about 150 grand. On big money items. But tensions run high. She's separated from her husband. So I she's sent you to go and listen to it. Also, I wouldn't have to listen to it. Oh, come on. It's automotive pornography. Welcome to the world of posh porn. Pawnbroking was invented by the Chinese over 3,000 years ago. You're talking about over £100,000. <laughs> Today, it's almost a near billion pound industry in the UK alone, serving anyone hungry for cash. Pawnbroking basically is like a cash point. You put an item in, you take your cash out. And one pawn shop specialising exclusively in upmarket goods is reaping the rewards. The item will be worth 90 grand. <laughs> you love making money. You could have probably phrased that a little bit better, <laughs> but yeah, it's about a quarter of a million pounds worth. The more money I make, the bigger the thrill. Surrey is an epicentre of wealth. Oh, my God. The wealthy clients we get in live in houses that we can only dream about. They've got the big cars we'd all love, swimming pools, everything that we would want, they've got. When banks aren't lending, millionaire James and his team are on hand. Hello. We can buy it of you for £2,525. <laughs> The team is a really mixed bunch. Those heavy ones are 18 karat gold. I love her accent. Must be because there's Irish in my family. But she's Bulgarian. <laughs> we are a little bit like the A team, to be honest with you, without the van. Do you want me to go up the road and get you some things? No, I just want you to go up the road. Well, that sounds interesting. So a bracelet, a ring, and just some general jewellery. Yeah. On a busy day, the pawn shop can deal with up to 100 clients. OK, well, we look forward to seeing you. And as long as they're pawning something of value, no one gets turned away. Well, that's interesting. A girl called Natasha's coming in. Apparently, her father was uh, a well-known cat burglar. Oh, that'd be interesting. I mean, he seems like quite a character. He's been away for a number of years. Just wanted to raise some capital. It's probably a quick and easy fix for them, as opposed to going to the bank. I don't know if he's allowed in any banks, but... <laughs> I'm visualising him coming in with a big bag of swag. What, with a little like bit a... of soil on it. What, in one of those black and white outfits with a little mask <laughs> on? This is 69-year-old Sid. For 30 years, he made a living as a cat burglar and became one of the most notorious criminals in Britain. When I was in the cat game, the rush of adrenaline used to fill my body. You know, just, it was unbelievable. You know, I got more out of that than the money out at the time. You know, as quick as it came, I used to spend it. You know, that was, that was me. Cheers. I just love it a real bit together for lunch. Beautiful. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Sid's career in crime meant that he lived a lavish lifestyle, which his stepdaughter Natasha remembers all too well. Oh, look, there's Pet and Colt. We did have a lovely home. Lots of grounds, woods at the back. Beautiful. You know, there was a lot of, you know, cash around. Often, if I knew Mum and Sid had been out, I'd sort of wait up for them to come home so I could charge him to take his shoes off, and he used to, like, give me £10 to take his shoes off. Oh, my hey, God. Hey, look, look, you're done here, Sid, you're not... <laughs> Miami Vice. Hey, Miami Twice. I went up twice, <laughs> didn't I? There, there was a couple of occasions that I remember um, wondering why he was all dressed in black, you know, and... He'd come home and, you know, he'd have, like, a, you know, a toolbox or something. And I think, hmm, he just used to sort of seal and say nothing. That was the best way. Bon appetit. Sid's days of luxury didn't last long, and he spent ten and a half years in prison. He was quite successful. But, you know, it always catches up with you in the end, and it did with him. In prison, Sid became a reformed character and found a passion for writing. One day I was reading Wind in the Willows and I realised, Sydney, you can write something like this. Sydney the well-spoken spider and his web-weaving wife, Winnie. <laughs> that just shows you how my brain works, look. Life in prison was tough. When I got the 10 years, I realised I've got to use this 
rather than stagnate in prison. Whilst locked up, Sid wrote a 300-page novel about an orphan duck, and his stories had an eager captive audience. Every night, round my bed, I had some of the most serious criminals in England, and they loved it. One guy, this man was a, a dangerous arm robber, like, cry, like with a tear in his eye, choked up at some of the stories I used to tell, you know what I mean? Out of bad comes good, and I think that's what's happened with him. He's definitely a reformed character. 100%, you know, this, that, the life of crime got left behind a long, long time ago. Now Sid is looking to raise some money to promote his book in order to support his family. Denzel's little brain was ticking over, trying to remember as much as possible. I want this book to be successful, to give back to my children and my grandchildren what they and me have missed out on in all those years that I was locked away. It is a big, hairy git as your mother and I shouldn't, <laughs> I shouldn't really read that bit, should I? To help Sid get hold of the cash, his stepdaughter Natasha has gathered together some jewellery that has been in her family for years to take to the pawn shop. It's really lovely, Tash. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many carat it is. I've got no idea. I think it's about four. More like six, that is. Really? Yeah. That's a deep one. So I've got what Nan put in, a little bit of gold. Love her art. I know, bless her. The whole family have really sort of come together to put in as much as they can. Even my Nan, bless her, she's put a little bit of gold in to see what it, that's worth. Probably not much. I don't even know if some of it's even real. <laughs> and we've also got Mum's bracelet. Yeah. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's still a lovely thing, isn't it? Yeah. No, it kills me that you have to do this, you know, I, I appreciate it, you know. I know you do. We need it, and, and hopefully I'd better put it back tenfold, you know. Before Natasha can get a loan, her family jewels must be scrutinised by one of the pawn shop's longest-serving employees, Lawrence. We've got a guy coming in with his daughter. He used to be a cat burglar back in the day. Don't worry, it's a long time ago. Yes, it's a spent conviction, so this isn't the stuff that he's picked up on a recent blag, then? No, it was a long time ago, so he's done his time. So yeah. uh, I guess for the crimes he's committed, he's been... Uh, he's been sorted out. Yeah, he's been sorted, so just yeah. uh, keep an eye out for him. It's not very often we come across stolen items, but we have to be very vigilant in respect of that, and we do carry out checks on the items that are brought into the store. He's the next cat burglar, so he's going to be small because you don't get many seven-foot cat burglars trying to get through your windows. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. I've got some items here that I'd like to pawn. OK. We'd like to see what they're worth first, if you wouldn't mind having No them. problem at all. Okay. Ooh, that's nice. These are the main things, really. Well, that's a nice starter, isn't it? I mean, how much are you looking to raise? Ideally, we would like to get 25 grand. I mean, the diamonds are a, a, a good size as well. I've had enough in my life, believe you me. <laughs> <laughs> Ten times the size, that's something. It's a lot of money, so I've got to get my facts right yeah, that's before yeah, that's I great. can okay. hand over some cash. Well, thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Well, Sid was a real character. When he walked in, I, I looked at him and I thought, he's either very dapper or got dressed in the dark. It's really important to the family to, to, to raise this money and it would make everyone happy to see, to see you do well. Well, this is the help I need, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this is the help I need. But will the jewels be worth enough for the pawn shop to loan Natasha the £25,000 she wants to give Sid? Come on, I'm naked there, I've got to tell you. Yeah. Them. Demand for pawnbrokers has never been higher, with over 200 new shops opening across the country last year. And what sort of loan are you looking for? James is having to take measures to keep up with an influx of new customers. 30-year-old Kristen is joining the company with over 10 years' experience in pawnbroking. Well, we've got a new girl starting today, and it's always quite nerve-wracking for someone not always used to dealing with the high-end items that we might see almost on a daily basis. Hiya, um, I'm Kristen, I'm here to see James. My speciality is in gemstones and diamonds. Prestige taking all kinds of different assets, from wines to cars, so that's new to me. 
This is Lawrence. As with all new recruits, James needs to get Kristen up to speed with how he runs his operation. Uh, one of the things we do see is uh, fine wines. There are a lot of fake wines about, so it's yeah. really important to have a look at the condition of the bottle. Yeah, so if it was like peeling off and everything. If it's then peeling off, then it might be a problem. And the biggest worry for me is that she might loan against an item that is a, a fake or a forgery. I'm always mindful of that, and that's why they have to be nursed through the first few months of. Uh, being with us. So the stitching should be perfect. Out of every ten bags, eight of them will be fakes. Cool. It's a different ball game with the amount of money that you're paying out for these high-end items, so you have to make sure you get it right. I am a bit worried about that, but I'm sure I'll learn. Small businesses rely on steady cash flow to operate successfully. And a number of the pawn shop's new clients need cash to cover temporary financial shortfalls like 46-year-old Hag, who runs a British superbike team. I got the name Hag many, many years ago. Some say it stands for handsome and gifted, but I wouldn't like to elaborate on that. Managing a superbike team is an expensive business. The tyre builds just from one season of testing and racing would probably buy most people a luxury car, so uh, it gives you an idea of the, the funds involved. Mounting costs mean Hag is running low on finances to get the bikes ready for the World Championships. I'm looking at trying to raise between 15 and 20,000 just to bridge the time between now and when the sponsorship money arrives. And this is what we are putting up for collateral uh, against the loan. It's a Yamaha R1 Superbike. Uh, a rebuild value on this is probably around 40 to 45,000 and just to have the reassurance that we have the money to pay for that by the time they're finished would take a great weight off my shoulders. A potential deal on a superbike could be lucrative for James, so he's accepted Hag's offer of a test drive to help him come to a decision. Here, Joe, have a little look at this. You fancy yourself on that? Popping no. up the shops, get a pint of milk? No. No, not your not, bag? Not my cup of tea at all. No. I'm surprised you're going to go on it. I have ridden bikes, yeah, but not but let's like that. Get this straight. I've got a Lambretta. Yeah, you've got mopeds. It's not a moped, it's a Lambretta. <laughs> it's, a it's not a it's moped. It's a little moped, isn't it? But will a few laps on a superbike be enough to convince James to loan Hag the £20,000 he needs? Good morning, Prestige. As pawnbrokers to Surrey's wealthiest, James and the team are used to dealing with their neighbours. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. But it's not just locals looking to secure their expertise in high end goods. Because we're dealing items that your average high street pawnbroker won't go near, we've got clients from all over the country coming to see us. The coastal town of Whitby is over 250 miles from the pawn shop. It's home to 60 year old Steve, owner of a family run restaurant. This is the hub of the kitchen. This is where we do all the meats, all the burgers, all the chicken, steaks. Everything really goes on here. It's like a little fairground, isn't it? There's something happening all the time. When the town is busy with holiday makers, the restaurant runs a bustling trade. In the summer, if you haven't booked, you, you probably won't get in. But operating in a seasonal town has its drawbacks. When it's quiet, some days you can spend all day by yourself. It's a ghost town compared to the summer. Anywhere else you know that you have X amount of covers on a Friday night. In a seasonal town, you have a problem with that. Steve has decided he needs a £5,000 loan as a short-term solution to keep the restaurant afloat. To get it, he's decided to part with some rather unusual items. Some years ago, when we had a few bumps spur, we bought two tanzanite stones. Tanzanite is a stone that's only found in Tanzania. It's a, a stone which changes colour depending on the refraction of the light through it. They're, they're very rare because they're only found in one place. Tens and tens of times rarer than diamonds. The oval one is the larger of the two, and that's 27.1 carats in weight. The other stone is in the very fashionable pear cut, and that's 18.7 carats in weight. It sparkles, it's got a lot of fire in that one. We paid between 12 and 14,000. Obviously, the banks aren't helping anybody at, at the moment, so we thought we'd, we'd see if we could raise money by using uh, a pawn shop. 
I took them to uh, the local pawn shop, and God bless them, uh, they were just out of their league. They, they don't deal with this sort of thing. And I would happened to be online and saw Prestige, so I knew that they could handle this sort of, uh, of uh, stone. So a long trip south to a specialist pawn shop could provide the expertise he's after. Facing him is new girl Kristen, who is being thrown into the deep end with her first big deal. Today actually is her first assignment in terms of dealing with the client when he first comes in to the end process and then hopefully she will succeed. Hello, are you okay Hello. there? Can I help you at all? Hi, are I was you? wondering if I could raise some money. What have you got for us? Some tanzanite stones. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And how did you come across these? And, um, the wife conned me into buying them. Did she? <laughs> <laughs> We're just at one of those periods in our life where yeah. we could do with some money. Yeah, I know um, the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm looking at the gemstones, I really hope that they are flawless and just hope that they are what they say they are, you know. How much are we looking for, roughly? I'd like to get at least 5,000. Five. What I'll have to do is just have a closer look at them. OK. And test them. OK. They, they look very nice. Thanks very much Thanks for very bringing much. them in. See you later. Bye. The 5,000 will make it worthwhile. Anything less than that, it's still worthwhile, but not as much. Steve faces a long journey home to Whitby, with the fate of his loan now out of his hands. Whilst gem expert Kristen faces the pressure of accurately appraising jewels for her first big client, James is getting ready for a deal of his own, a loan against a superbike. Oh, oh. Oh, God. Oh, that's good. Try and get it off. What do you mean? <laughs> it's really funny and helps the day pass watching James go through his midlife crisis. Oh, no. Jesus. Quite a lot of the time, he's all the gear with no idea. Just put it on. Well, I can't, can I? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me help you turn around. Sort this out. <laughs> oh, leave off. I've got camel foot. It's <laughs> <laughs> all disappeared down there. What? <laughs> to help convince James to loan him £20,000, Hack has invited him to Brands Hatch to test drive one of his bikes. It's a bit drizzly, actually, at the moment. Quite dangerous uh, conditions to be whizzing around a track. Getting a bit anxious, I don't know why. It's, you know, it's just the thought of all these guys speeding around at breakneck speed. Oh, there they go, look. Morning, James. You all right, mate? It's a bit good. cold. It's a bit cold, yeah. It's well, noisy out there as well. It is. Well, I've got something inside that I think will uh, warm you up. It's a nice bit of kit, isn't it? What can you tell me about it then? Firstly, when you get on it, it scares the living daylights out of you. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you crashed? Let's just say. I managed to get to 21 crashes before my 21st birthday, and that was a long time ago. I must admit, I'm getting a little bit edgy at the moment. I've just been to the toilet, um, not a lot happened. Not really a biking type of guy, really, you know. Used to little sort of mopeds and things when I was a kid. When I got on that bike, I was absolutely f***ing myself. Yeah, it's a little bit of a step up for Lamb Brett that does 36 miles an hour and a super bike that's uh, 200 miles an hour. This thing is phenomenal. Jesus Christ. That is quick. Getting this right, I don't want to come off. I'm so nervous, I don't know how fast I'm going. Oh my God. Ah. I thought I was going at breakneck speed and over my shoulder come Hag on one wheel making me look a bit of a wally. The joy rides over, but has James's hair-raising spin done anything to deter him from doing a deal? That was absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> that is just the answer I was looking for. That was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. That was really good, honestly, exhilarating around there. The back end went a couple of times in the wet. I don't know if you saw that. Are you talking about the bike or you? Oh, me. <laughs> and the bike. Hag's tactics of sweetening the deal by giving James a few laps of the track has worked. It's a goer, mate. Yes. <laughs> and he walks away with an offer of a £20,000 loan.
there too. Whilst James is away from the office, his team busily mans the fort. I'm afraid he's not in the office at the moment. But James not being able to receive emails on his phone is beginning to frustrate PA Joe. James is always out of the office, gallivanting around, getting this deal done, that deal done, and it's just proving so difficult getting hold of him. He's had this phone that belongs in the Natural History Museum. Yeah, I often get asked why I'm carrying the house phone with me everywhere. This one works fine, you press a few buttons and you make the call and you have a conversation. It does what it says on the tin. It does no email. It's a pain trying to get decisions from him when he's out. No, he's still not back. Can I have uh, two pie mash, please? People need cash quick, and we need decisions quick. He's like the loophole that is holding things up. Yes, yes. As soon as he gets in, I will make sure that your email is the first one he checks out. No problem, I'll let him know. I've run out of patience. We can't go another day with that brick. I think I can teach this old dog some new tricks. Screw. The shop sees many unique personal items, but some people have also turned to parting with prized collections to get hold of much needed funds. People have amazing collections that they've dedicated their whole lives to. Now these have massive sentimental value to themselves, but also they sometimes don't realise the huge monetary value that's there as well. This is serial collector Chris. It's just sort of football souvenirs. I've got glasses from different countries, like when I go to Switzerland, I pinch that from FIFA. I don't know, that's probably against all the rules. It's a signed Yuri Geller bent spoon. <laughs> Box of Maltesers from Malta, that's cool. We've even got stuff on the roof. And luckily, it's never fell on me. Everything sort of means something. I don't mind if people view it as a bit weird. I, I, I think quirky is a better word, maybe. The collection closest to Chris's heart is a set of banknotes. These were the first ones I've got, so that's like an old pound note. Over 25 years, he's amassed 3,000 notes, a one-time world record. This one from Rhodesia, according to me, is worth about $600. That's one of the oldest ones. That's from Vatican City, that's over 200 years old. It's all hand-signed and held together with 200-year-old sticky tape. Father of two, Chris is a freelance financial advisor. Recently, some of his customers haven't paid their invoices on time, leaving him short of money for everyday bills. There's sort of five or six big invoices that I was waiting on coming through. So I just thought, well, rather than waiting on those to come through, if I can just put the money in the bank that they're going to bring in, then I can sort of cover the next three months' worth of bills and mortgage. And then when the invoices come through, then we just swap it over and I get the banknotes back. I think the banknotes are worth, as a collection, probably about 20,000. Chris is hoping the value of his collection will be enough to get a loan of £5,000 worth of banknotes he can actually spend. But to get the cash he needs, the collection will need to impress front of house man Lawrence. Good morning. Hi there. What have you got today? I've got a big collection of banknotes. You haven't robbed a bank, have you? No, 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 it doesn't look they're, they're, not, they're not current it's... banknotes, are they? Some are, some are. And what are you looking to do? I'm looking to pawn them. You're looking to pawn them? Yeah. What sort of amount are you looking for? Um, between six and ten. Let's grab one out, let's have a look. They're just various world ones. Most are in good condition. Some of them are very old. But at the end of the day, we want to lend you the maximum amount of money. So what I want to do is I'll give you a call in a few days and so speak to you soon, mate. Thanks very much. Nice to meet you, Chris. Cheers. Safe journey back. It'd be interesting to see what they think about the banknotes. Um, I'd be surprised if they don't get any too close to my valuation, and then it's up to them to see what they want to do about it. We've got a collection here that could be worth thousands. I mean, we're talking about 20,000, the client estimates. You know, we are talking about one of the most valuable collections around. Lawrence will need specialist advice on the collection. Could this be one of the biggest deals of the week for the pawn shop? In the pawnbroking business, money is loaned against clients' valuables. Well, this is uh, Natasha's bits and pieces. Yeah. How much depends on what each item is worth. Have you seen that, Joe? <gasps> oh Have a look at that. God. The size of it's a monster. Today, James is taking Natasha's like family LeBron. jewels to be valued before deciding how much he can loan against them. What happens with these lovely, beautiful pieces like this when it's too big? What you do, if you take two out, you've got a pair of earrings. Why or four out and you'll have nipple rings. How many nipples you got? As James deals in high-end goods, getting a second opinion on value is crucial to minimise the risk of making a loss. 
we don't actually see many of those rings. And the fact that it is such a massive stone makes it just a quite exciting find, really. I think I know what that ring's worth. I've got a rough idea on the bracelet. If it's less than that, I'm going to be a little bit upset. His go-to guy when it comes to expensive jewellery is Chelsea-based expert Ian Towning. Hello, James. How are you doing, honey? Good, how are you? You all right? Yes. We're good. I've got... It's a rotten day to come out. Oh, it's miserable out there. Oh. Hopefully you won't be quite as miserable when I show you these little gems. Mm. Take a look at that one. Wow. <laughs> Have you measured it? We think it's five carats plus. Wow. It's a good-looking stone. Modern, brilliant, cut, marquee. Well, I think when it's cleaned up, <laughs> you'll see a big difference. Yeah. I mean, it's filthy. We'll yeah. give it a scrub up and see what we can do. Yeah. And we've got another piece in here. That... Oh, that's so mean. I think they've been in the family quite a while. They're big stones. Yeah, they're just under a carrot, we thought. It's well made. Clean, clean, clean. Mm. I think in auction, you get the right people there. You'd be laughing. You yeah. can give it to me as a birthday present, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha is hoping for a £25,000 loan to help her stepfather, Sid. Care. Thanks a lot. But will Ian's say? valuation of the family jewels yeah. convince James to part with the cash? <laughs> it's the height of a busy week at the pawn shop. Yeah, you just need to get some bit of notice. And Joe has taken measures to help James keep up to speed with the business. Hello. How are you, right? Yeah, you? Yeah, good. Got your stomach in there. Remain calm. What is it? <laughs> it's my new Teflon, is it? Yes. Don't touch it, let me do it. You can view all your emails, images yeah. that we have that we're waiting for you to look at. Yeah. Seeing James with a new bit of technology is hilarious. Camera. Camera? How do you turn it on, then? I am a technophobe, there's no doubt about it. All this new fandangle stuff that they're using these days, I don't understand any of it. Let me phone you and see if you know how to answer it. Let me see if I know how to answer. Just put it up to the ear, you fool. Right, see the arrows pointing this way? Slide it. The green. The green. I am. The green. You're doing the big white phone. Get the green button. It's not happening. Slide it. I won't let him out to any meetings till he's mastered it, cos he's going to look even worse than having the old one. Hello? Hello. Who is it? <laughs> it's your dad. What time are you coming home for your dinner? Dad, you sound more <laughs> rough than you. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Hello, bloody Luya. Whilst James gets to grips with new technology, Lawrence is London bound to seek expert advice on Chris's banknotes, a collection he believes could be worth up to £20,000. I think the banknotes are really impressive, so I just hope they live up to the valuation he's actually put on them. At the moment, I feel like Ronald Biggs with uh, three large cases of banknotes in the back. Helping with the appraisal is banknotes expert Simon, who has over 30 years' experience in the field. Hi, Simon. Oh, Lawrence. Hello, good morning. If you could just give me your initial sort of impact on them. This is an Italian note of papal states, and it's a good example with collecting that when things are old, that they're not necessarily valuable. This, on the other hand, is a good banknote. That, on its own, is worth about £200. See, so there could be some gems in here. Yes, I mean, that's, we've found one already there. Thank you very much. Lawrence walks away with a detailed valuation, but will it match Chris's £20,000 estimate? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit nervous, so I'm just trying to keep myself busy. I think the best case scenario for me would be if, if I was hoping to get um, 10,000, I think five would be the amount that would be most useful. Anything above that is sort of a bit of a bonus. I'd be surprised if it's not five. We're about to give Chris the um, outcome on his notes and hope he's a happy man. <laughs> Hello. Hello, is that Chris? Hi, it's Lawrence from Prestige. How are you doing? Hi, Lawrence. I'm fine, thanks. I've been through all our investigations for you. Mm hmm And obviously the amount you're looking for is about 10k, wasn't it? Yeah, ideally, yeah. And you obviously thought the value now is about the £20,000. Uh, yeah, I'd say so, yeah. He said that a lot of your notes are quite common and together they wouldn't amass too much. Thank you, the expert opinion. I'm afraid we'll be looking at a loan of nearer 2000 I'm afraid. Oh, right, OK. Because um, he came in with a valuation of two and a half. I'm sorry I haven't met your expectations. No, that's OK. I'll be in touch. OK, have a good evening, anyway. Cheers, and you? Cheers, mate. Bye. 
and the sound of his voice, you actually feel like he's really gutted that he feels his collection has been devalued. Uh, I mean, he's been collecting all his life, and now I've told it's worth sort of 20% of what he actually thought. What do they say? Um, he said there was, you know, some good ones in there. There are good ones, yeah. Uh, but in terms of what they could lend me, they said it's worth about two and a half thousand, so they'll lend me two. That's all right. Um, Yeah, yeah. It is lower than I thought. It is frustrating because I could have done with a bit more because that would have really sort of made things a lot smoother for us. But, um, yeah, it's, it's all all right. Chris accepts the £2,000 loan, despite the valuation being 17500 less than he'd hoped. <laughs> Ninety percent of all items pawned at Prestige are redeemed. 40, 60, 80, 90, Once a loan is repaid in full with interest, customers are reunited with their much-loved possessions. Thank you. Oh, that's with cheers. Them. Thanks, Thanks thank very you. much. And you. But for the other ten percent who can't pay up, it's potentially bad news. Sam. Meet sixty-one-year-old Maggie, who lives at home with her two cats, Sam and Charlie. My cats are literally my life, actually. Um, I'd be lost without them. I don't have favourites. I love them equally. They are both as gorgeous as each other. Little fatties. <laughs> Last year, Maggie was struggling to pay some bills and made the difficult decision to pawn some jewellery, including her engagement and wedding rings and her mother's wedding ring. That's where I used to keep all my good jewellery. And knowing that that good jewellery's not in there anymore is a bit sad. Be nice to get the proper stuff back. But Maggie didn't anticipate the problems lying ahead. It was horrendous. The first bit came down and then we had another burst of wind and rain and then it all just collapsed. And then two days after that, my boiler packed up. That money that I've now used to buy this pump was going to go to getting some of my jewellery back. It's like, now where am I going to find the money to do the fence? It just adds to the stress. The mounting unforeseen costs mean Maggie potentially faces losing her jewellery for good. But recently, she's been burdened with something more serious than bills. Being diagnosed with breast cancer, you kind of think those things are not going to happen to you. Um, but unfortunately, it does. It's the worst news, I think, that anybody can be given. Because you just automatically think... You know, you just think that that's it, you, your life is over. You don't know. You just don't know. To be honest with you, I just wanted to get away from the doctor, get away from the nurses. I just wanted to get home to my cats, <laughs> to be honest with you. Joe is responsible for handling all overdue loans. Today, she's on her way to Maggie's home to discuss her options. I know she's struggling and I've overheard there's some ill health, but that's it. So just really want to get to the bottom of it. Hello, Hello Maggie. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm Jo. Hi, Jo. Hello. Maggie, come in. Pleased to meet you. And you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. No problem. Lawrence said you've been keeping in touch. You've got to, because I don't want anything to happen to that jewellery, and I was, you oh. know, getting really stressed out with it. What rings have you got in there that mean the most? Well, obviously, my wedding ring. Right. And um, my engagement ring. And also my mum's rings. I don't want to lose any of it. They mean the world to me. I'm really sorry you've put anything in that's of sentimental value, because that's always a risk with pawning something. And unfortunately... To redeem the whole thing at the moment is 386.32. Right, OK. So I'm under the impression you haven't been able no. to get to that stage. <laughs> no. This needs to be paid or the items will get sold. Right, OK. Oh. Sorry, I'll get a bit oh, upset. Don't worry, I'll oh, bless you. I really didn't think that it would come to this, but 
at the end of the day, I think that it's jewellery. It's, it's not my health, really. I've gone through enough. Within the last six months, you know, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, my goodness me. It's just everything that's gone on that was the icing on the cake, you know. How much more can you sort of go through? Yeah. I can go and ask if there's a possibility that we can give you an extension. Yeah. But if I don't get authorisation to extend it, is yeah. there anything in that um, pledge packet that is more sentimental I'd have to, to look you? at them again right. and show you which ones they were. OK. If this was mine, I'd just give them back to you, trust me. I know. I'm gutted for you. Yeah. All I can tell you is I will try my best. Thanks, Jo. I know you don't need another worry. No. Thanks for That's coming. All right. I really do appreciate no it. Problem. I'm oh, going to go and talk to James now and just see if there's an extension that can be offered. Are there any pieces in there that would mean she could get some of the pieces back? Anything. I'm just going to see what I can do now. Oh, yeah, you're right. Good. Yeah, all right. Well, I was yeah. all right till it went there. Why? Well, what happened? Real run of bad luck, that lady. Bad health. Oh, all right. What's wrong with her then? She's had so many things happen to her. She's found this tiny little lump, gone to the doctor, and he just came out with it and he just said, Maggie, you've got cancer. So what's happened then? What's well, she, the thing is, got? this is what I've what I've left her with. I've said that I'd ask for an extension, but I know that isn't really going to help her because that date will come up and she'll be in the same position. The yeah, end. and she's still got that on her mind then. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, I don't know what we can do really. You know, I'm not normally like this, but that's difficult face to face and seeing someone well up and hear all that. She's what have I told you about listening to client? The thing is, you can let these things go on forever and ever. All in all, it's, uh, I can't see a positive Someone's outcome. Ring. But what do you want me to do about Nothing. it? Nothing, I'm just I mean? saying, when someone... The I know, I know, but sitting there listening to it all, and then when she moved yeah, but now in, I'm she, sitting here listening she separated to it all. from her husband, so I'll she's on her own. I'll send you to go and listen to it all, so I wouldn't have to I listen to it all. Now I'm listening to it I just want us to you... put a lot of effort in at looking at her items yeah. to see if there's a way round this for the woman, that's all. If you listen to the sob stories, you'll be finished as a business within six months. You cannot let these stories mar your judgment when it comes to doing a deal. I can understand where you're coming from, business is business, but she really is a lovely lady. Could we really look at her stuff and if there's any chance that she can get any of it back because something else in there pays the rest off, that would be brilliant. All right, let me have a little think about it and we'll get back to her. Can we look at it first thing in the morning so I can tell her something? I'll give it some thought. Okay. I've got 101 other things to get on with it. All right. James has less than 24 hours to decide what the next best steps could be for both Maggie and the business. It's the end of a busy fortnight at the pawn shop and new girl Kristen is working on her first big assignment, valuing client Steve's Tanzanite stones. Because it's my first job, really, a prestige, it's a bit more nerve-wracking because uh, I have to get it right. <laughs> There's nothing worse than someone being nervous when it comes to appraisal because you will not get that process correct. She's examining the gems to see if they hold enough value to merit a £5,000 loan. I'm just using the dichroscope because Tanzanite shows different colours from different directions when you turn the stone. Two colours I can see, which is violet and blue, which means it's probably been heat treated to take out the yellow to make it more intense blue. I've had a look at the Tanzanite gems oh, yeah. and the quadruple A grade, which is like the best you can get. Right. It looks like they've been heat treated. The fact that they're heat treated does affect it quite a lot, doesn't um, it? Not too much, because most of the Tanzanite on the market has been treated. You'll probably turn out in your face. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> Christian seems like a really, really nice girl, but if she can make me more money, she'd be even nicer. In Whitby, restaurant owner Steve is waiting to hear if he'll get the £5,000 loan needed to help the family business through troubled times. The money to us is a breather. It's important to us. We've got plenty of assets, but assets don't pay bills. You know, you have to have cash to pay bills. But obviously I'm a little bit on edge. Hello. Hello, Steve. Yeah, hi, Kristen. I've done uh, a few tests on them just to verify that they are the real deal. I've seen up quite a lot of times tonight, but not to that size and to that quality. Oh, very good. 
now, retail value, you'd be looking at around up to 30,000, really. The, what, the retail would be up to 30,000? Yeah, yeah. Bloody hell, that's good, isn't it? Basically, we can offer you the loan for 5,000. That's marvellous. Right. I'm very pleased. Are you pleased, yeah? Yeah, I am. Yeah, thanks very much, Kristen. No yeah. problems at all. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Oh, that was good, wasn't it? Retail, 30,000. So, quite happy to do... No, that's, that really is quite good, that, isn't it? You know? So, they're quite happy to do the deal. Well, it gives us the time now to, to have a wee bit of cash flow in the bank to get us forward. And, you know, I couldn't be more delighted. It's great. Future always looks good, but it's looking brighter now. Yeah. Definitely is good to get the, the first one done and uh, get it out of the way. And now I feel more confident to do more. Back in Surrey, ex-cat burglar Sid and stepdaughter Natasha are also hoping for good news. Her family want to pawn some jewels to secure a £25,000 loan to promote Sid's book. It's always nerve-wracking when you're waiting for such an important answer to something. We've built our hopes up getting this money. If we don't, it will be, you know, it will be devastating. I'm hoping they're going to be surprised with the value. I don't know. Some people are, some people are disappointed. Hello. Natasha, it's James here from Prestige. How are you doing? Good, good. Been waiting for your call. Um, we've done a lot of work on the tennis bracelet and the marquee ring. And, and the stones are really exceptional. They've, there's some quite good numbers there. The stones are really nice. They're really clean. And the value of the two items is about 150 grand. Oh, really? <laughs> Oh my God, well, I wasn't expecting that. So you could actually potentially borrow anything up to 100,000. Fantastic. Thank you very much. OK. Lovely. Thanks, Thanks very much for your call. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> oh, my God. He said we could borrow up to 100 grand. I don't think she had any idea, actually, speaking to her, that. Uh, they were going to be worth quite that much. So that's, uh, it was really nice to relay that news to her. Just had a phone call. <sighs> Only said it, we could borrow up to 100 grand. <laughs> no. Gosh, I mean, yeah, it's just yeah. overwhelming, really, getting the news. But um, now we can really get the ball rolling. And, um, you know, having that kitty to work from is really going to make a big difference. This is going to get us on our way to sort our kids out. That's yeah. all I'm interested in. I know that. You know, know, I've had my money. I've wasted it. At least, like, I know my, my, my kids have got a good chance, and this will help us a bit more. You know what I mean? Love you. All right. In the Weybridge office, Lawrence and Joe are looking through Maggie's personal jewellery to see if anything can be sold to pay off her loan. How's it going? I'm struggling. I really want to find one ring there yeah. that will pay off the whole lot, but there isn't anything there. Most of the value is really only in the metal, unfortunately. Oh, no. So, effectively, now, we'd actually make a loss slightly. Right. Well, look, I have been thinking about this. I had a little think about it last night. In fact, after you told me what yeah. the situation, it was playing on my mind. So, I've come to a decision on it. We're mm. going to actually write that one off. You're joking? No, we're going to give her the goods back. Oh, oh well done, James. Um, Bloody hell. You're really right. chuffed. You've got temperature. <laughs> That's brilliant. I don't want to be the cause of any unnecessary stress. She's not going to expect that, I wouldn't have thought. OK, Let's well, that'll be a good nice one. Well done. One. Good oh, on you, James. Enjoy, I've been dreading it, now I'm going to enjoy it. I think, from my point of view, it's not about the number with Maggie's loan, it's just about her situation, and I've come to the decision that uh, it's the right thing to do. Oh, oh my God. Well, that's never, a first. Never I've never, ever known James write off a debt before. I know it's never going to happen again, but he's done the right thing on this occasion, and I'm really chuffed. Jesus, Lawrence, quickly, we better ask for anything we want. Yeah, anything well, you've been wanting? I quite like Let this Let me horse. get that hairbrush. Maggie is visiting the pawn shop to discover the fate of her much-loved jewellery. Hello, Joe. Nice, nice to see, see you again. Mwah. Come and have a seat here. Thanks, Joe. Get in there. Brilliant. Thank you. Up here. That's OK. I did go and explain everything to James when I got back. Did you? And I had a quick chat with him, cos I wanted to see, could I get the extension, what could we do? He, um, had slept on it. 
He'd taken on board what I'd said. He was listening, which was nice. And he made a decision. Thank your you. situation and your circumstances are exceptional. And he's done something quite exceptional. And he's told me to give these all back to you and that the company will write that loan off. God. I'm just totally gobsmacked. I really, really am. I can't thank you enough, Joe. really, no, well, honestly. That, that's, I'm just that, totally that his decision. overwhelmed with it. You Lost deserve a break. I really am, you just honestly. deserve a break. I have to thank James it's as well. Oh, he's a miserable looking git. You'll never believe it when you see him. <laughs> thank really. you so much. Oh, thanks, oh, Joe. You don't just let me off. Oh, thank you, well, Donna. I wasn't expecting that. I never ever thought that I'd get them back. Sounds like I'm a bit overwhelmed with it all. Oh, that's all right. I can't thank James or Jo enough for what she's done for me. I feel brilliant being able to give that good news instead of it being, you know, sorry, we can't help you any further. These items are going to get sold. And that was just fantastic. Absolutely over the moon. Can't believe it. It's the nicest thing that's happened to me in quite a while, to be honest. You'd have to ask James why he came to that decision. It must have struck a chord with him somewhere, cos he hasn't done that before, and he is very business-orientated, so it's not a business decision. It's obviously come from his heart, but nice.